Hello everyone. Today we gathered here for this ETA round table discussion with industry experts, which we have on how to be successful tester. This event is organized by the ETA. And it's my pleasure to introduce to the ETA as well. So guys, uh, let me request Aritya to share a few things about ETA, which most of us might be aware of, but you know, uh, it's better like if Adi, Aritya can explain. So Aritya, Thanks, uh, handing over to you. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, those of you who probably would not know much about Agile Testing Alliance, we have been there for last uh, maybe nine years, 2013 is when ATA started. We have chapters across 24 countries uh, and we have got presence uh, around 24 countries. We have launched uh, many certifications out of them. Basically, CPSAT is one of the most popular and the most recognized one. CPDOC is another, CPWST is another. Uh, we have organized 750, 800 plus events in last nine years. And uh, our motto is that we want to learn together and it is a collaborative uh, evolution of community that we have been doing uh, since uh, last nine years. Ganesh, can you move to the next slide, please? Yes. And as part of these events, many of these uh, have been conferences. So we have organized some 15 large scale international global conferences out of one which we would basically like to highlight is ATGTR, Agile Testing Alliance Global Testing Retreat. It is uh, one of the largest conferences in testing in the area of testing in Asia. And this year it would be seventh edition of uh, this conference, which would be scheduled in December. Uh, API Summit, which again happened to be one of the first in the API side, we organized that in 2021. Uh, blockchain Summit was one of the first blockchain summit that we organized in Bangalore. Uh, we have been doing many first in the area of emerging tech technologies. And as part of this, uh, we thought that uh, this particular event that we are organizing now, uh, which is about roundtable conference, is something which is amazing. And I would request Ganesh to take it over from here. Over to you, Ganesh, to introduce the event and the speakers and then take it there afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Adi, uh, for sharing the quick facts about ETA. Well, that's about ETA. So now let's move on and discuss what is the roundtable open discussion event is all about. First of all, I welcome you all. And would like to give some background on this event. So this event is totally driven by ETA volunteers. What we are actually trying to do is like through such events, we would like to make sure that everyone gets an access to the testing evangelist who joined us today, Sanjay, Naveen, Mukesh, Shami. Similarly, we would also like to increase the testing knowledge and awareness in the individual and sharing and caring of the knowledge is what we are looking for through this event. There are some quick numbers we'd like to share with you about this event, guys. So we have received more than 600 plus registrations and all those re registrations actually represents 200 plus organization. That means 200 plus organizations have approached for this event. We also have got 300 plus questions, which actually we have filtered and categorized after removing the duplicates. So this is what it's all about. We we'll jump onto the next page, which is talking about the volunteers. Uh, can someone please mute? Yeah. Thank you. So this is our volunteer page and uh, it has the list of volunteers who have contributed in the, for this event. Uh, to name few is like Ravi Surya, Nayan Raj, Darshan, Rasika, Harpreet, Harshada, Ankit, Rituraj, Ganesh, myself, Nagarajan, Kartik, Harsh, Sushant, Rama, and Ratikant and Harshad are the one who have volunteered for this event. We would like to thank you for them. I mean, for to all of them for putting all this together. So thanks, thanks to them. Let's jump onto the actual event for which we are waiting. First of all, a warm welcome to our most renowned and humble and some of the biggest names in our testing industry. I would like to proudly welcome Mr. Sanjay, 
Mukesh, Naveen, and Shami. Although we are going to miss Shami, but uh, I must say, like he has also, you know, like wanted to attend this event. Just unfortunately, he had some sad demise in his close relatives, and that's why he is not able to attend. But yeah, thanks, and uh, definitely we would miss his presence as well. As everyone knows about uh, all of them, still I would like to go over a few things, few facts about them. So I'll start with Sanjay. Sanjay Kumar, we know Sanjay Kumar is the founder of Selector Hub, the great tool which he has developed and used by globally by every single automation tester to find out the tools, uh, the locators on web elements, and it has eased everyone's job in the automation world. Same line, Mukesh, everyone knows about Mukesh, he's YouTube videos and uh, so many of us have grown grown ourselves back to actually by studying them. Currently, he's serving as a vice president at iNeuron.ai. Navin, Navin Kundela, I would say if you want to learn letter stuff, follow his YouTube channel. He is going deep dive into all of those, and I believe most of the community members are benefited from his videos. He also conducts training classes. Although Shani is not, Shami is not here, I would uh, mention about him. Shami is another big name in our software testing training world, training market, I would say. And most of the people who have completed or uh, who are, you know, like totally new to the IT world are benefited by his training too. His training are also most renowned trainings. So I'm glad to share everyone's introduction here. And uh, with this, a warm applause for all of them. Thanks for joining all of you guys. I would request one by one to each of our experts to let the audience know about their mantra on how to become successful tester in the industry. So with this, uh, to begin with, I would like to invite Sanjay to quickly share about his overall, uh, what do you say, the approach or I mean to say, to begin with, I would like to invite Sanjit for quickly sharing his mantra before we open up the stage for all our attendees. So, Sanjay, would you please begin with your, you know, like mantra for this? And, and Ganesh, yeah, would you like uh, to unshare your screen? Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ganesh. And uh, thanks for the great introduction and thank you Adi and Agile team for uh, hosting this event and uh, arranging this for community. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a difficult question for a developer or a creator to how to become a great tester or successful tester. But it's still like from my previous experience, I will try to conclude that thing. So uh, I mean, in short, I would say what I used to follow is that Whenever you get any requirement, not immediately jump into the testing of that particular build. Always try to understand about the requirement of the application. I hope you guys are able to hear me before I yes, give sir. all yes, this jam. <laughs> okay, sure. Thank you. So uh, always try to understand the requirement, end-to-end -end requirement, what you have been given for testing. Not immediately jump into the testing. Sometimes it has happened like I did this mistake like many times that immediately whenever we get, got the build, like test is, you have to test this functionality, we just start immediately testing that without knowing in and out of that. So, uh, so for, from that perspective, always ask as many questions as you can ask to the uh, uh, developer and the, uh, who is the stakeholder uh, of that particular build or requirement so that like you understand in and out of that requirement. And uh, <clears throat> once you understand the requirement, ask as many questions as you can ask to the developer, and then start the testing. And when you are testing, make sure that like uh, you uh, properly, uh, properly, when you are raising the uh, bugs or something, you properly document all those stuff and everything, so that like it goes well. And whenever it breaks in production, you have the all the proof and everything ready with you 
so that those kind of fingers and uh, things doesn't come on you that it has been missed from your end. So yeah, I mean, likewise, there are like a lot many things. So without taking much time, like in short, this is the thing, uh, mantra, like the very basic uh, fundamental thing is this, that ask as many questions uh, you can ask to the developer before jumping into the testing, clear all your doubts, go through the requirement. Uh, I guess somebody's video is on and I can see some curtains are hanging here and there. Can you just turn off? Guys, please turn off your video if you are doing it. Uh, please do that. Maybe like we can turn off everybody's videos first from admin side and then we can just. Yeah, but Sanjay, we have made spotlight on you, so no, you are being on the screen right now, so don't get bogged down okay. by this. Please continue. OK, OK, sure. So uh, and then uh, like, of course, <laughs> lots of things were there. I lost where I was concluding the things, but yeah. Now I would I would like to over to other uh, and Ganesh yeah. over to you. Sure. So if Ganesh yes. you are there, maybe yeah. we can request Naveen and Mukesh yes. to share their mantras. So yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, Mukesh, uh, over to you. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks for your quick uh, discussion discussion about mantra about becoming a successful tester. Yeah, thanks to you. And over to Mukesh, please. Yeah. So. Hi everyone, thank you so much. So this is my first conference or I will say the first talk on ATA. Okay, so I used to watch a lot of video, but this is the first time I'm talking on this platform. So thank you so much, Aditya and the team. Now coming back to the mantra part, see we don't have any hard coded mantra as such. It is just when you start testing, right? So don't test just like you are going to run few test cases. You are going to mark the test cases pass or fail understand the business first okay so the moment uh, i will tell few incident about my previous company so i worked with dell i worked with sap so from 12 to 14 i was with dell and 14 to 22 was sap and it was all about crm applications which i was you know testing so even though i was full time automation tester but as you know the reality right 70% or i will say 50 to 50 sometime it was 50 50 for me like 50 percent automation 50 percent manual sometimes 70 percent automation but still i was doing the manual testing so one thing which i noticed when you actually test from the business perspective you understand how critical the testing is right you start thinking as a business user you start uh, thinking as an end user so whenever you get any requirement or whenever you get any test cases or you have certain tests to run first understand the business understand the domain first of all then only you can test them thoroughly because testing is not about just type click making the test cases pass uh, red green and raise bug right actually we are playing a very important role when it comes to the business part so when you are comfortable the business you your complete language will change them uh, how you talk to your stakeholders how you talk to your po developers right now you are not working as a tester you are actually contributing to the product so this is what I follow always, whether it's automation or it's manual. Try to see whether it's covering the actual use case or the business scenario. If yes, try to build more test cases around those real time scenario. Even this is not part of your test cases, even though it's not part of your strategy, try to build some more scenarios which can find more bugs from the real user perspective. Second thing which I generally follow, reading the production incident. OK, so Every time we get production bugs, right? We have to analyze what went wrong, okay? Because every time you get a production bug, it's actually a real bug or the real use cases which customers are using it. So when you go through the customer incident or the, I will say the production bugs, you'll get a lot of information how they use it and how we can add those scenarios also in our testing cycle, okay? That will add uh, that will actually add a lot of values, and that's how you keep growing your I will say test suite. You have your regular test case in the new release. You keep adding new test cases plus try to identify the production scenarios as much as possible and try to test as a business user, not like a tester. Great, thanks. Thanks Mukesh for this detailed uh, input on this mantra to be successful tester. So over to you, Navin. Uh, OK, guys, uh, I hope you can hear me and you can see me now. Not yet. Not yet. OK, I think. Uh, but you can hear me, right? It's uh, it's fine. 
Yes, you are audible. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm not sure that the camera is on or not, but yeah, the, from my side the camera is on, but yeah, it's okay. Okay, okay great. Yeah. Yeah. We can hear you now, and we can see yeah. you as well, Mukesh. Sorry, oh. Naveen. Yeah, we can see you now. Okay, perfect, Aditya and Ganesh. Thanks for lovely introduction, and thanks for inviting for ADA. Yeah, for the successful mantra, for although Mukesh and Sanjay they have already covered, but for my side, upgrade your skill set. That is why I always prefer, because you are a tester and your roots are tester, but you have to upgrade according to the current market situation. whatever is going on whatever the new things are happening in the market and what exactly you really want to learn just start learning about it see the current market see how exactly people are doing see what are the different things that i really need to be learn about you know to improve my testing skills to improve my work to improve my testing work but remember one thing whatever you are learning either it is performance testing or automation end of the day we all are testers so you root are tester what is the problem these days we are facing that lot of people actually uh, learning many things but they are actually forgetting about that we are testers also that is the most important thing your job is about the quality right you have to think about the quality you have to think about that how can i minimize my work what were the manual testing or manual test cases that i'm taking i'm taking 5 days in a week to perform those 1000 test cases what i can automate or not can i improve my work can i improve the productivity so that is i think uh, the productivity how will you improve that you have to upgrade your skills and in your career and your testing career that plays a very important role so according to me upgrade your skill set make sure that okay you are learning the right things at the right time in your career that plays a very very important role in your testing career to become a test successful tester so yeah with this note i think that's all for my side okay great uh, thank you navin thanks for your inputs so uh, guys before we move on i, I would like to share the forum is now open for all of us to ask the question however there are some rules for the audience which we would like to follow in order to get maximum out of the remaining time because we have to cover a lot many questions as i already mentioned we are already having a uh, more than 300 questions but then we have reduced that list so we would also like to ask them as well as the questions from the audience too so what we will be following is like we'll ask one question and let only one of the expert to answer it and similarly next question can be answered by the next likewise we will move on one question from the audience followed by one question from the moderator likewise we will do it and i would suggest like uh, ms teams has a very good feature to raise your hand just speak your name unmute and ask the questions everyone is please be on a mute so that you know we can everyone hear the things properly and go on so now the and uh, in the in the meanwhile can we request uh, mukesh navin and sanjay to get your cameras on because yes. that way we can see you as well and uh, the question will be addressed one by one hopefully you can take finish maybe you can start with the first question that we have collected okay fine so i would like to know these days uh, the road map for an automation tester is become a uh, different there are people who are also looking for an a uh, shift in a career some of the automation or developer are shifting to the devops or mi or ai data science role what do you think about this by, by the before we get this answer ganesh can you please make sure that you unshare your screen if you can so i have unshared it Yes, and can you now repeat the question, and one of uh, our experts will answer it, and then you can take the next question. Okay. Okay, sure. So, would like to understand a roadmap for an automation or a developer. Basically, these days in the industry, most of the folks uh, who are also having a development background, they are also coming into automation world, and uh, in their career, actually, they are also getting a chance to shift into DevOps or MI AI AL. a uh, machine learning or ai data science role so would you suggest any advice on that do you think that career path uh, is going to benefit them in near future or sticking to the automation world will benefit them mm -hmm. uh, can i take that yes 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 please. yes please <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, that's my favorite question actually always so uh, let me take that yes <laughs> i am also doing a lot of devops activities these days and i have seen a lot of people uh in fact my uh, previous company cto also he was having the performance testing background and automation background and he completely moved to the devops 
and then finally he became the CTO of the company in Germany. And that was like amazing experience to see such people like that. We see generally we say that, okay, hey, in testing, what is the next thing after 10 years, after 11 years? I have learned a lot of things in automation, but what is the next thing that I really want to do that? So guys, it's perfectly fine if you're really learning uh, DevOps because uh, DevOps is again amazing uh, tools and technologies that you will be using it. But one thing you have to remember that you should not get influenced unnecessarily by the people. You really need to check your quality that are you really comfortable with that those tools and technologies or not. If you really want to learn those things with respect to infrastructure, with respect to cloud, with respect to uh, build pipelines, if you really love those things and then you really want to improve the infrastructure cost and everything for your company. And I think that's really a very a, plays a very important role because infrastructure as an automation that you have to learn about it. You're already coming from the automation background that will definitely help you a lot to provide the automation mindset. But I think it's a great career. Either you are learning the DevOps or you really want to start your career with the DevOps activities and everything. You start doing something with respect to DevOps courses or something. Maybe you learn from the different resources or YouTube. Or best thing is that in your company, talk to the DevOps guys, talk to the SRE guys. Think about for the production works point of view that how exactly the DevOps people are taking care of the production infrastructure, AWS, cloud and everything. How exactly people are doing it. That will help you a lot to understand the system. Don't directly jumping into some courses and then looking for the change. Nobody is going to entertain you much actually, because obviously you have to beat those people who are already into DevOps and people are already in the pipeline. So DevOps is a very, very vast area where is exactly you have to put a lot of efforts learning many infrastructure tools and everything. Same thing with the AI and the machine learning. If you really want to play with the data and you really love that, okay, yeah, how exactly you, uh, you know, in terms of machine learning, I really want to predict something and you really want to perform that, okay, yeah, but with the help of prediction, I can save a lot of pricing and everything for my company and for my customers. In that way, if you really want to love that, and you're really good in uh, data analytics or uh, stats or uh, machine learning or uh, your mathematics, if you're really good in those things, definitely go with that. And it's a great career, automation, testing, if you are already having this background, it will definitely help you a lot in that career as well. And it's, I mean, everything is perfectly fine. There is no hard and fast rule that, okay, you have to spend your entire career only in only testing. Testing will always be there. That is the beauty of testing that the mindset, no one can, uh, you know, uh, dilute that mindset from you. So definitely that I think you should go with that. Learn the right things at the right pace from the right people. Correctly said. Thank you, Navin. So see, uh, Today we have other moderators as well. Uh, we have oh, maybe Danish, well as... you can take the you can take the question. There are five people, four people who have raised yes. the hand. Yeah. So do you yeah. want to take it from Om Omkar Omkar Eshwar? Yes, yes, yes. I want to take that. Just before moving on to that, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we also have Nayan and uh, Aditya as a moderator for this Harsh, session. As well, who will be Harsh, Harsh, Harsh is also is the there. Moderator. Yeah, Harshita, so there. So those will also be rotating the questions. So now over to Omkar. You can unmute yourself and uh, talk about your question. Ask the question. Um, yeah, thank you for uh, giving this wonderful opportunity for me. But uh, I have one question. Like I have recently uh, uh, faced that agile methodology. We're a little bit struggling for the uh, estimation purpose because most of the sprints are uh, like uh, I have put the wrong uh, estimation and uh, uh, like little struggling about the depth going as deep as I am uh, in, in agile methodology. So how I can improve on that area? Please suggest uh, 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 anyone uh, and or guide me. So, so Naveen or yeah, you want to take that again? I mean, uh, I didn't get the question exactly. Like, what exactly you are struggling in Agile? If you're following Agile, so what is the main question? Like, where exactly you're uh, lacking? In in sprints, suppose uh, I have uh, uh, finished that two sprints and a three uh, and the third sprint, I totally uh, uh, given the wrong estimations. So that's mm -hmm. why the automation takes a little more time to finish it and afterwards we are lagging behind the uh, like our uh, smoke and sanity testing for the coming sprint as well as sometimes what I face it uh, what are the backlogs I have that is also being struggling because of automation uh, like little is uh, extend timing wise mm -hmm. so here only I'm facing a lot I of problem he's asking for sizing he's not yes. able to like give the proper sizing 
okay so uh, wants to take it mukesh uh, sanjay yeah sure so when it comes yeah so when it comes to estimation right so you have to be very careful because if you're not able to finish it right then again it comes to you so when it comes to estimation you don't consider like you just need to write the scripting so you also have to take a lot of things so first of all make sure that you have a framework or not if you don't have a framework then to give the enough estimation for the framework development plus the maintenance as well what i have seen people just give like story points based on what they have to automate but then don't consider the maintenance also right suppose if you have infrastructure then obviously you have to put less effort but if you don't have infrastructure you have to uh, estimate that as well so obviously once you have everything in place then you can have a proper estimation but if you are just getting started let's say you are in third sprint obviously if you don't have a concrete framework the estimation will change so whenever you estimate uh, give the estimation right make sure you consider all these points and based on that you have to give the estimation yeah and uh, just one more point i want to add on that like whenever you do uh, give the sizing like mukesh uh, mentioned that make sure that you consider each and every point like uh, for writing a script you will take one day for testing that script you will take 5 hours then testing in jenkins you will take two more hours so likewise you divide and then when you will give the sizing with the justification that's where they will take your sizing otherwise like if you will say i will take five days for like two test cases they will say oh my god you are taking five days but when you will give the justification then that right script writing it will take this much time this will take this much time this step will take this much time so that's where, that's where you will understand and uh, frankly speaking uh, it is there is no formula for this kind of thing it it just comes with experience over the time so you will start getting those things initially you might take help of your lead take the to give the sizing and always add like what i generally always do like whenever i get the sizing or i have the sizing i always add plus 1 or 2 days on top of that whatever we calculate so that's why we never come on that kind of uh, gun neck or shot that oh you have given like 3 days sizing and now you are taking 5 days okay thanks thanks mukesh thanks yeah. sanjay uh and harsh for a small point uh, that whenever you do estimation right generally we used to take 10x so let's say if you one automation takes 10 uh, manual test case takes 10 minutes i will keep 10x because it takes 10x uh, if you just uh, check the average part because when you start automating that script right so at least you will go through once manually the moment you start automation you need to identify all the locators you will be visiting twice the moment you write test cases again you will be executing that script multiple times then running on the jenkins so the done criteria is until it's not executed successfully on jenkins side we will not consider it done so generally take 8 to 10x and based on that you can do the estimation okay good tip thanks mukesh yeah uh, harsh you can uh, take the next question uh, hi ganesh so we have nayan who would be asking now uh, nayan are you there hello yes nayan we can hear you yes hello all the my question is uh, code versus codeless automation what do you think uh, as a non it and it person should prefer for a learning for all speaker my question is okay my answer is straight forward not just one thing you should prefer whether you are non it or it you should prefer to learn both the things because future could be you never know like when you will be working in a company today they will might be writing their own code and after like 6 months some great tool comes in the market and they feel to move towards that so we should always be ready to adopt new technology new things because uh, in every stage in it we always have to keep learning new things keep exploring things because one technology what we are using today you never know like when that become old tomorrow and then you have to adopt new things like you there are so many examples in our testing industry itself or you otherwise see so two uh, software comes and goes technology comes and goes so learning remains constant so that's you that's where like i'm in like non it guy so i used to uh, make sure that i keep learning keep exploring new things and uh, so that way like we all three you, you must have seen that we write the code as well and at the same time we are exploring the codeless automation tools as well because we never knows like when whole industry will start adopting those tools 
So that's where. Uh, over to you guys. OK, thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Hope uh, they satisfy your answer. Nain. OK, uh, over to Shrikan. So we have Shrikan. Shrikan, can you please unmute and ask your question? Does RP impact on uh, attribution testing? As I am uh, join, joined in a uh, small scale industry, uh, I mean, startup, so they want to implement RPA. So, does it impact on automation testing? Okay. See, Shikant, you are comfortable in Hindi or English? Both, both. Okay. See, RPA is not going to impact, okay, because uh, when it's a RPA, right, it all together a different category altogether. In RPA, we don't focus on the test cases. Here we focus on the complete processes. So if a company is adopting an RPA, definitely go for it because we, you are again going to automate the complete process. In automation testing, you focus on the UI, API, mobile. Okay, ultimately here also we are doing the testing, but end-to-end -end testing. Here we are automating the complete process, how you can automate the end-to-end -end process using different <laughs> activities, different workflows that we have. So go ahead with that. Good thing with RPA is obviously you don't have to write much code. It's all about drag and drop activities. You create a workflow, deploy them, and you will be able to execute them. Same thing here we will do in automation using code or using codeless tools. So ultimately they both are doing things, so it's not going to impact much. I will say they are supporting each other. Obviously in RPA we have some paid tools and we have some freeware as well. So it depends on which tool you're using, go for it uh, because I don't think you will be getting much exposure on open sources tool, but if you're getting a chance to work on RPA in real time, go for it because rest of the things yeah. you can learn and implement anytime. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mukesh. Thanks, Mukesh. Uh, over to Harsh. Sure, thank you, Kanish. Uh, so uh, I have a question uh, that at times it is observed that QA culture is missing in the team. So it's like, how can we inculcate uh, QA culture in the team overall? So any inputs on that side? Okay. So, so how do you feel like QA is missing, QA culture? Like when did you identify this? No, so it's like uh, this is a general question which has come from the audience. So it's like I'm asking from okay. audience behalf. So it's like uh, a general observation which has been done. So it's like any inputs on that side. It's an to, sorry to intervene, but that this is something I believe from the small or uh, mid level companies where IT, I mean, QA culture is somewhat, you know, missing or being uh, not, uh, you know, like valued as such. Yes, sir. See, uh, I'll, I'll take this one because the QA culture pressing, I've been listening this thing from last 10, 12 years. When I started my career that time also it was missing and it still is missing. <laughs> and then there is a lot of a stigma in the market that no, the QA, uh, uh, the jobs will be vanished from the market after five years. Nobody will hire and all such things. It's nothing like that. Like how can you uh, remove the QA process? How can you remove the QA thing? <laughs> So the QA process is very important. The problem with us actually, the problem with the QA, the problem with the engineers, QA engineers, we have we have such a narrow mindset sometimes when you talk and we always with the inferiority complex that uh, nobody's going to hear the QA thing. So you have to vocal about it. You have to raise the uh, point that why QA is important, why quality is important, why uh, this particular automation uh, tool or implementation or automation process is important. Not only for automation, it's overall testing process is important because who is going to take care about uh, the production things in that case? If your customer is not happy, it means your quality is not up to the mark. So you have to be vocal about it. You have to start the process. You have to showcase those mattresses that this is what other industries uh, and other people are doing in the industry uh, from different companies. You have to set up those examples and everything. So you have to present the POC about the testing processes to the management that this is what we have to do it and this is whatever if you're not willing for the uh, value for the QA thing this is totally bullshit process that we are having it nobody is taking care about the about the quality in fact in the sprint planning also nobody is taking care about the QA points and everything and nobody is taking care about that okay fine my test case are still uh, failing and then still uh, if we are moving to the production then what is the point of having the QA team in that way so I think we should talk about it we should vocal about it present the data and then the data is very important that why the testing is important why if we build uh, 500 or 400 test cases and we are running it back to back and we are running it through the CICD pipeline that how can we improve the process 
if you're giving the production delivery after five days, we can give like on a daily basis also if you're doing a proper automation and everything. So you have to be vocal about it. Then only you will be valued for your work, for your quality work. That's very important. The problem with us actually, tell me one thing, I'm pretty much sure that okay, Aditya and Sanjay, Mukesh, you all are agree with that. Whenever we raise a concern that okay, we should have a performance testing also in our team. And the, the exact answer from the management is saying, okay, no, nobody bothers about the performance testing. Just forget about it. We will do after six months. And by the time your application is crashed. Okay. And I've seen in, in good e-commerce companies also. But you have to be vocal about it. You have to present it that why performance testing and automation testing or overall testing is important. Sanjay, you have to yeah, so points. yes, I wanted to add like two more points. Totally agree with Naveen. So you see that uh, one saying is that ki ghar ki murgi dal barabar. Sab kisi ko apni job achhi nahi lagti hai. So developers are also complaining ki yaar we are not valued, we are not cult uh, our culture is not there in company. Those uh, designers are getting more valued whenever what they are designing. Management is taking their own decision. Developers always saying like nobody is hearing us. So it's like we always everybody thinks like that uh, our job is not good. Their job is better. So that's a one perspective. And I guess like we all can agree on that. And another thing is that like I feel like from my personal experience, QA are much more valued in every company. You see that people used to run behind you. You are made a release later production way. And can you test this thing? So because like whenever there is like uh, less number of people like in any particular any particular field, Whenever there is a less number of people, because developers are always more, testers are always less. So you see that they are always in demand. Like you will always be like pro a product manager. Always is that QA guy is there? Can we take? Can you take this release? Can you approve this release? Without your approval, release is not going to be in, going to go in production. So you are. I mean, QA and testers are always valued. Don't think that we are not valued. Create your values, show the data like Naveen mentioned, show the data as much as data you will show, as much as value you will present in company. In fact, like I was in uh, Go Vivo, IBM, in Mobi, everywhere like QA were very much valued, like without their decision, they were never taking, building any requirement, they were never taking any release to the production, they were never like in every meter, every meetings they used to include the QA for uh, discussing the requirement, architecture and everything. So we are very much valued. It's just a perception that we might sometimes think that, oh, we are uh, less valued because sometimes initially testers get less salary, but over the time you see that testers are getting more salary, getting high paid, then sometimes uh, more than many times more than developers as well. So it's like everywhere, everywhere up and downs are there, whether that's a developer or QA. All right, let's say thank you. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks, Ravin. So, uh, Prachi, you have a question. Can you please unmute and ask the question? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Yes. So my query is that uh, sometimes like some of the QAs didn't want to go into the automation side and they want more into the functional side because they don't like to code or anything. So uh, what is the view that if the QA is want to go to the business analyst, like I want to go to the business analyst and what are the things that I can improve in that? And if I can go into that and do much more uh, like uh, be successful in that field. So is there any uh, uh, opinions on that? OK, so can I take this? Yeah, yeah please. Yes, go ahead. See, Prachi, first of all, if you don't have interest in coding automation, if somebody is forcing <laughs> you, that's a different story. OK, so one is if you like say if your management is forcing you to learn automation implement, that's a different story. So one part you have to do what is is required for a company at, at that moment. Okay. Second thing, let's say if you are not interested in at all, there's no harm in this. Okay. So there are multiple paths that you can take. It's not that everywhere you see automations, though you have to go into automation. It's not that only one field or one path exists. No, you can become a you know yeah. uh, technical role. You can go to the management role. You can go to the BA role. As Naveen mentioned, if you want to go into AI ML, it's completely OK. So one thing which your, you know, what company or what current project demands, you have to do it OK by hook or by crook. Second thing, you keep upgrading yourself in this, I will say business side. So let's say if you want to become a BA, go ahead with that. So second thing which I want to highlight, I will not say go blank here. So always try to keep upgraded. Learn a little bit about automation because even if you become BA, right? Until you don't know how automation works, what how to 
create a pipeline or if you don't have any knowledge right you will not be able to much add much values so you have to be uh, i will say you should have knowledge about everything then only you can skill in all uh, you know even if you pick one path you will be able to uh, give much effort if you know some things from each side sec third thing which i want to add that if you don't like automation again after some time you will get fed up because a lot of tools are coming in the market so if you don't like automation if you don't love automation after a point you might give up that i don't like automation so <laughs> both parallelly it should go what company demands and what should be your career path yeah, yeah. right i'll add, i'll add one point here prachi and uh, yeah. i totally agree with mukesh see uh, automation is not the only ultimate goal right become a good tester i have seen many testers in fact my seniors also from my previous companies and everywhere it's not about that okay they are great testers no doubt no doubt about it automation is just a solution to improve your testing process or make it fast and fast quick and everything and it looks cool that okay yeah magic is happening browser is getting launched and everything but you become sme subject matter expert for example uh, you are you are working in financial domain so you just do some certification for the financial thing so you become so expert in that that all financial based companies are just behind you either it is fidelity or jp morgan or morgan stanley or bank of america just think about it you just like learn about each and every process how exactly the financial institutes and all these people they work if you really want to upgrade yourself in terms of mobility services so all these companies worldwide they are behind you in terms of like ola uber or a zoom car or sext or uh, you know any of these companies are available in the market because you are expert in your domain so what is the most important thing the beauty of tester is that you test end to end the entire system and you have the knowledge about the complete functionality of the product the each and every module of the product that plays a very important role in fact i will always give a weightage to that person who was really great in in terms of domain in terms of product knowledge as compared to the automation automation is just a, a small thing to improve the process and that's it if you are really having the fear of automation and you don't like it that's don't just leave about it just forget about it no need to worry about it but i would advise you one thing that Uh, improve your domain expertise let's say you are really want to get into some medical domain or any healthcare domain then you have to learn about what are different certifications are there the standards are there in that particular domain how exactly try to understand the customer problem it's not like i really want to get into ba but what is your preparation i really want to become a po but what is your preparation are you really interested in that area or not it's not like i don't like automation that's why i want to go to ba no you have to think about it you have to decide that okay yeah, i'm really liking it can i deal with the stakeholders can i understand the business am i going to solve some problems for the customer or not these days people are hiring the pos and everything they really want to see how challenging you are how uh, you know how exactly you're trying to solve those complex problem for the customers this is what people are looking for actually for a, a testing over the ba and the po point of view do you really understand the business or not so think about it if you have those capabilities i think uh, bo and the ba is again another career great career path for the testers yes uh, navi no, actually uh, nowadays uh, lots of people have like automation automation everybody everywhere there is automation automation and the people who don't want to uh, get involved in that like don't like that i don't say i'm not like testing i like uh, testing very much and i i love my job doing testing so that's why uh, i think the more more companies all also they want like you have to have experience in auto mission so that's what uh, why uh, more people are uh, like moving to the ba or any other uh, things so that's why i that question came into mind so uh, yes thank you so much navin and everyone mukesh also thank you for clearing thanks. my doubts thanks prachi yeah uh, over to harsh would you like to ask the next question sure ganesh uh, just give me a moment or should i take one Uh, you can take one okay so this is for all uh, can uh, can you tell me like these days uh, there are many functional testers in the industry who have crossed their 10 years of experience and would like to jump into the automation but the fear the confidence which they don't have because of that they are not you know willing to jump into the automation thing what do you suggest or advise uh, to such candidates uh, if they want to overcome their fear and uh, go into this because they are being offered the sdet role and all those things but just taking the role is not sufficient right so they need to prove as well correct correct yeah 
So uh, I'll take a uh, couple of points here that that is absolutely like I almost like daily I'm almost like getting this question that okay I have to switch from my profile from manual to automation. Everybody's asking about automation. My friends are getting good packages and everything. I really want to do automation also, but how to learn? See, the direction is very important because this is the ultimate thing in automation that if you are not getting the proper direction, if you're not getting the proper guidance, guidance means like how to learn, what to learn, what are different steps to learn. There is the sources are very important. When we started learning automation around 10 years back that time, uh, YouTube was not the thing that where uh, you know the hardly we like I used to read a lot of documentation and everything and then here and there doing some experiment on QTP and load dinner. So likewise that we actually learn nowadays we have so many YouTubes. Um, the YouTubers are there content is available and everything is available in terms of courses in terms of training in terms of certifications in terms of Udemy courses a lot of things are there absolutely fine. But the only thing is that that important thing is that you have to start learning. Spend time at least for next three, four months. Set up your target that for automation point of view, what exactly I really need to improve. Let's take an example of Selenium. Let's take an example of a code based automation where you would know that okay, the without programming language or without basics of programming, I cannot write any single line of code. I cannot even understand also any single line of code. It's not about simple uh, you just remember the things and then write the code. No, it's not like that. You have to create many different frameworks, utilities, libraries, generic functions, automate complex to complex scenarios. You have to automate that. So without programming, you cannot survive in automation, especially with code based automation, which is like 99% market capture by codeless, uh, sorry, code based automation. So this is what the first improve your programming. I'm not saying that you have to be really amazingly great in programming, but start with the basic for loops, if else condition, basic object oriented programming, and then start learning about the core features of Selenium. So you become so expert that you give me any UI, whatever in the, uh, you know, uh, whatever in the scope of automation, I try to automate that. You give me any complex table or any complex UI or single page application or any damn thing I try to automate that. So just get that level of confidence and then start learning about the framework part and everything. And once you get the confidence that OK, yeah, this is what I got. And then there are many open source applications are available in the market. Open source tools are available. You don't need to pay any single penny for that. A lot of YouTube content is available. We all are there to help you guys on social media, on LinkedIn and everywhere on Telegram groups are there. We have certain uh, sessions are available like that. The only thing is that you have to start somewhere. So I think my advice is that set up your target for next three, four months. Easily it will take three to four months according to my estimation for an average guy and then learn about the step by step and then start going with that. I think that is the right approach and there is no escape for that because you have to learn automation guys. I'm not saying that in the previous question. I mean you were saying that no automation is not necessary, but if you really want to learn and you really want to see yourself to the next level in your career, in terms of package, in terms of good uh, security, in terms of good uh, compensation, good position and the value. No doubt about it. The, obviously, you will be valued if you have the technology and the technical skills in your resume and your profile. So if you really want to get that, you have to start and there is no escape for that. You have to start learning about it and then go for it. Great info, Sunil. Thank you. Piyush, yeah. uh, you can unmute Just yourself. I want to add one more question. point in the last question. Thanks. Yeah, please, Mukesh. Yeah, so Naveen said the right point that you need to decide which tool you want to learn. So let's say you picked up some tool. OK, you spent five to six months on some tool and now you are not getting enough opportunities. OK, so in that case also you will get frustrated that I learned automation. I did everything, but now I'm not getting calls or maybe I'm not getting opportunity. So learning the right tool, which is demand, uh, which is required in the market that you have to learn. So let's say as Naveen said, three to four months is OK when you have to understand. But how much time you are giving that is also important, right? So let's say if you are spending like only one hour in a day, again, three months is not something which will help you, right? So what Naveen said, three months, it means you're putting two to three hours in effort, right? right Naveen, then only you will be able to cover all the scenarios. So dip, so decide a timeline, okay, that three months, six months, decide how much hours and you have to start with programming because the moment to write the first line of code also, you need to understand what is class, what is object, what is uh, you know inheritance so the first line itself has all the oops concept so that is how you have to start at least after 10 years you realized so you can start now and uh, yeah we are all are here so you can reach out to us in case if you need any guide or assistance totally learning is always Thank constant you. 10 years doesn't matter we all in fact like more than 10 years experience we yeah, have 
every day we right. keep exploring okay this new method came in selenium this new method came in play right now new tool so we all are learning and somewhere like we all are on like same place you might be expert in some particular technology we might be some ex expert in some particular technology so yeah. if you will keep exploring keep learning you will be keep, keep growing but so, one thing i'll tell you, one thing i'll tell you guys please especially for the freshers especially people are having less than uh, four years or three years experience and you recently started around after two years and three years i think it's a very right time for you guys to take a decision don't get late uh, to take a decision in your career it's all about your career it's all about your career path i see a lot of people they're coming after 10 years and 15 years also after 18 years in the industry also naveen i want to learn automation because now i don't see any much value in my company in my team because uh, i'm i'm handling a couple of uh, you know 10 people in the, my team and then they all are automation engineers and I don't understand. We don't have that chemistry between those, uh, you know, resources and me. So that's why I don't get feel valued for that. So let's not get into that trauma unnecessary. Otherwise, it will be a big thing that you are actually lacking behind. And then these people are new generation is coming. They're learning new tools and cool stuff. So you have to go according to the market. That is also very important thing. OK, so please take a decision at the right time. Don't get late in your career. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Piyush, please go on. Hello to all of all sirs. Good evening. So I have two, two questions actually. First question is right now Selenium and Java combination is dominant in the automation testing market, right? Correct. So also this Java is used in uh, APM tool also for a mobile automation as far as I know. So oh. I want to know that whether there is any threat to Java from Python, whether Python will be able to replace Java in the upcoming years or uh, 10 or 15 years. Is it having any threat? My first question. And second question is that, see, in my company, I am doing automation testing uh, from around two and a half years. Now my manager is trying to shift me to mobile automation. So mobile automation is very new for me. And uh, he believe, believes that I can do mobile automation also. So I want to know that uh, th there will be scope for mobile automation as there is scope for this web application testing like for Selenium. So these are my two questions. OK, so yeah, let me take this. So very first thing, like, is there any threat to uh, Java from Python? So there is, of course, uh, this we can say for everything like is there a threat for me from someone will i be alive after 10 years or five years so nobody can guarantee for any particular technology whether that's a human or a tool or a technology or a product anything so we nobody can get, give the guarantee of that this will be there tomorrow but for sure like there is no threat for java selenium from python they uh, that has the its own uh, values own, own pros and cons java and selenium has own pros, pros and cons and uh, why everybody and more people uh, use java and selenium i see uh, technical side maybe naveen and mukesh will add more points but what i see like as in like product guy that more community support is there if you get stuck today somewhere you can immediately get the answer from anyone and most of the people will be there. Most many blocks are there. Lots of support is there. So your problem can resolve like this. Lots of job opportunities are there in Java Selenium. And that's the one of the biggest reason that mostly people learn that. And of course, like really great Java support is there and uh, the kind of improvements and other stuff is there and the kind of uh, companies and uh, people behind Java is like it's a like uh, everlasting thing. So it's not there is no threat. One thing. Another point like uh, Mobile automation, definitely it has a great future. Most of the companies and every company in fact is coming up with their own mobile app and mobile is the future. Of course, we all know that. So definitely it has a huge great future and it's a great opportunity for you and you are very lucky that your manager trust on you that you can do that and you are capable of doing that mobile automation. So it's a great opportunity. I would say uh, it it's just a matter of time. Like it may take like 10, 15 days. In place of 10, 15 days, you might take a month of time to learn that, but for sure you would be able to do that. And it's a great opportunity. Don't lose that. Learn the mobile automation. It's a wonderful thing. And yes, definitely it's a future as well, a great future. 
maybe Thank Naveen you. and Mukesh can add more points on this. Yeah. Thank yeah. So see, if you would have asked me the same question few years back, then I would have said Java, Python, and uh, you know JavaScript. But now, if I see what the trend is, Java, JavaScript, and Python. So I will say there's no threat. There's a you know few openings for Selenium with Python as well. But when it comes to market capture, as Naveen say, uh, Naveen will agree on this, and Sanjay said, 80 to 90 percent still captured with Selenium and Java. So it's no threat. When it comes to programming. So you are still using Selenium. So whether it's Selenium with Java or Selenium with Python, concept will remain same. So even tomorrow, if you have to switch to Python, it's just a syntax change for the from the programming perspective. You're still using Selenium. So I don't think you should you know worry about that. You will have a threat or not. No. So focus on the one part. Later on, you can shift to you know any other automation tool or any different programming. We all have switched multiple times to different programming languages, different tools. And we came back to you know the our original first tool that we started using. So one thing you have to be a little flexible. Take one, be expertise in that, and later on you can switch as per the project demands. Second thing, mobile automation. It was available in the market from a long time, and it will be there. Most of the companies they just have mobile app. They don't have the web application at all. Okay. So in that case, they only look for the mobile testing. So automation is little tricky for mobile. Okay, I totally agree. You will get a lot of issues. So that is also give you a lot of learning. So it will give you added advantage because if you know Selenium or because if you know end to end automation, you just need to understand few additional methods or command for mobile automation. Let's say double tap, single tap, scroll, flicky events, right? And few advanced activities. Rest everything, type, click, scroll, everything is same as what we do in web automation. So only setting up the device, handling the scenarios is little tricky sometimes. But it has a huge scope, so please go ahead with that if you're getting a chance. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you very much. Uh, Sashank? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. So, yeah, my question is like, uh, how long uh, should we stay with the like uh, in same company? Like, how long should we stay in same company? And what is the right time to change the like switch the job? <laughs> So we no, all you take it. <laughs> I'm not working anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, that's a that's a good question. But uh, how long? See, uh, as long as you are comfortable with your with your team, with your work, with your uh, whatever the you know aspirations that you have from the company in terms of compensation, in terms of flexibilities. If you are getting those things, that's perfectly fine. The most important thing it's it actually depends on your priority. Let's see for if you ask me, my priority is that work life balance. And the second priority is my learning, no doubt about it. And the third priority is that okay, the team and everything, the culture of the company and everything. But let's see, the culture is great and the manager is great, the compensation is great, but my work life balance is totally uh, you know screwed up. Then in that case, that's not my priority. So it depends, you know, the person to person. But if you are, uh, if you can see a pattern, people they get, uh, you know, influenced very quickly that okay, yeah, my friend is switching the job and then he is getting a good hike or something, and yeah, I'm not getting it. See, ultimately, a lot of switches also it could be a you know bad thing for your career because I have seen people that you know in two years six companies or four companies they have changed. It's like crazy. Like every six months they change the company. That is also not going to help you. So you think about it that okay, yeah, whatever that. Uh, uh, you were actually doing in your company currently and then is it like uh, like everything is almost done your contribution is done and then the project is on hold now or maybe the project is almost completed and maybe your manager is got changed or manager and but between you and manager is you are not compatible and maybe the chemistry is not there or maybe the uh, the team is not that great or up to the mark or maybe a company is in loss and you can see that okay maybe after two three months they can take a decision or they might take a decision and then you are waiting for the let's see uh, some other use cases like you are taking uh, taking some time for the appraisal also and you are expecting some whatever the value addition that you have done for your company for your project and everything and you are expecting that okay after one year at least i'm expecting some promotion or maybe some promotion hike or a good hike according to the current market standard so always uh, carry your thing with the current market standard whatever the compensation that you have it should always be less than maybe 10 20 percent less than no doubt about it that it always be there today if you're making let's say 20 lakhs package but the moment you switch you might get 23 24 25 also but that's okay the priority is that my work is good here my manager is great and my company is no doubt about it having a great culture good product good on-site opportunities and everything is there then 
why should I, uh, you know, jump just for, you know, two, three lakhs? So if you're getting those things, it's perfectly fine. If you're not getting those things, you're not happy. The most important thing is the happiness that you are really compatible uh, in your current company. And then, yeah, everything is going fine. You're getting good appraisal, good personal growth. That is also very important. Getting flexibility in terms of compensation, sorry, in terms of work-life balance and then leaves and everything. Then I think it's a, you know, great thing to uh, stay in the same company. There is no point to jump and switch because see, switch will happen one time. You're jumping it, getting a good job, no doubt about it, getting a good salary. But again, you have to prove yourself in the next company also. It will take time. You have to understand their process, their manager, their team, the, the company culture and everything in the product. Also, you have to understand that you have to prove yourself once again for next six months for the probation period, at least that, okay, hey, I'm also a productive guy. I'm also the valuable in the company. So that is again, you have to start the process once again. And then I've seen my, uh, some cases that people are actually regretting unnecessary switch that they do it. So when you see that, okay, yeah, it's very right time. It's very high time. My compensation is less. Company is not doing great in terms of compensation. I mean, your current company, I'm not getting good amount of work also. And then uh, if these factors are not there, then I think you should take a right decision at the right time again, once again. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Nari. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those are the very very good we are good. Yeah, great answers and all. I think we are past uh, our time. I am not sure how you guys are doing. Naveen, Mukesh, uh, Sanjay, can we spend a few more minutes? Because there is a follow up question that somebody really wants to ask. He has been. Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Uh, I think uh, on my WhatsApp and he said that before you end, if you can ask this one question, I would be really obliged. So if you allow me, I was not supposed to ask this question, but somebody is asking me to ask this. Can I ask <laughs> sure, this? So we, on can, their uh, we can take it. We can take two, three questions like for next 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. We can take it. That's, yeah, I, I sure. Sanjay, Mukesh, this, you're okay with that. Yeah, yeah, fine. yeah, this yeah. is this is Vishal Vishal uh, Ramyan. He has basically sent me on WhatsApp. He says and it is uh, a follow up question to the functional testing discussion that you guys were having very interesting one. He says what if functional test. You are breaking, I guess. Adit, you're not audible. Yeah. So, so, I Aditya, your voice is breaking, so you can share the question with me or you can share it in the chat. Oh, did you did you lose me? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes Aditya, we can hear you now. OK, sorry, let me repeat that. The question was what if functional tester crack automation interview, then what is what are advice you will be giving him that he can uh, properly do automation in the new company? So he he is a functional tester who cracks the interview. And now your suggestion for him on what should be done for him to do better automation. Vishal, did I ask this right? If you are part of the audience. Yep, I think uh, uh, someone can take it. Mukesh, you want to take it? Yeah, sure. So Vishal, uh, so let's say you joined a company, OK? And uh, now somehow you crack the interviews and now you're in the team. So first of all, just check. Do you have existing team, existing infrastructure, existing framework or not? If you has, if you already have this, start analyzing what kind of scripts they have. OK, do they have a proper framework or not? And infrastructure Analyze how they are running. What tests they have automated? What was the issues they got? OK, understand the existing process. Based on that, you can adopt. OK, take some time to understand everything from the scratch and then you can start adding value. But if you are someone who is starting from the scratch, OK, then you will have advantages and disadvantages as well. Advantage like you have to build everything from the scratch. A disadvantage, you might do a couple of mistakes, which is perfectly fine. You will do, you know, you will come over this when you go with multiple iteration. So when you start from the scratch, it's altogether a different thing. You need to start with a proper strategy, OK? Which tool you want, which language you want to pick, because you will be building a team again, right? In case if you want to grow in automation, you need a team. So which framework, which programming language, OK? And you will be part of building the framework, writing the test cases, execution, maintenance, everything. So just follow this. If you are someone who's starting from the scratch, Take some advice from some expert. Okay, if you have your friends, if you don't have friends, just reach out to us. We can guide you. 
But if you already have a framework, everything you can see the existing infrastructure and in the framework and continue with that. So the only fear which I can feel right now, which you have that will I be able to automate or not? Yes. OK, so it's not something big. If something has uh, can be automated, should be automated. So you can do that and continue. And whatever issues you find, anyways, you will get the solutions over the Stack Overflow or reach out to us. Thanks, thanks, Mukesh. Uh, Rashi, would you like to ask your next question? And then we can actually take the last one and end because I think we promised 10 more minutes. So probably Manish would be the last question. Yes, okay? sir. If that's okay. Hello. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, I want to uh, I want to ask uh, this question that uh, with a long gear, can anybody enter in IT with the learning automation Selenium tool? Absolutely, I guess. Yeah, yeah why not? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, definitely. OK. Actually, I have I mean, a, uh, initially I have a long take, gear. Take some time, but mm -hmm. uh, definitely uh, you can enter. Uh, okay. Like for someone who is already in IT and who is trying to learn Selenium and Java, he might just take like two, three months, three, four months. And uh, for someone who is like absolutely coming with new experience and with some gap, they might take like five, six months. Just a matter of like two, three months extra, nothing more than that. But and IT, companies, you can get IT. IT companies always ask for an experienced person. Uh, it's not like that all the IT companies ask for that. Like everybody has their own kind of requirement. And let me t tell you the fact that uh, yes, th it is easy to get the job, look, search for the job. It is more difficult for the companies to get the right candidate. There are like a hell lot of opportunity, a lot of openings are there, but people are not getting uh, people. So many companies are there. Those who are looking for the candidate who has the experience, who has the knowledge, who can deliver the task. They don't care about whether you have a, a like what kind of degree you are coming with, what kind of experience you are coming up with. If you are able to crack the interview and if they feel that OK, you can deliver, they will hire you. So it's just like the right time to get the right call and then right time to get the right opening opportunity. It it may take some time, like two, three months extra, but you will. I can give my example in this case, like I was uh, like initially I had like three, four years of experience in mainframe domain then i learned selenium java i you won't believe like for one year i used to keep on going for walking interviews in bangalore like everywhere i used to stand in li line a queue of thousands of people and then then after that i realized no this is where i'm not getting jobs uh, op jobs opening and not getting the job then i learned selenium java from a training institute then I start writing a blog it took me for almost like one year to get the job in uh, Say, uh, I means in testing, automation testing, even though I was like in IT. So it takes some time, time, but you will get definitely. Okay, and there are okay, many, fine. many examples. So, okay. Rashi, are you in India? Yeah, yeah, I'm in India. Okay. See, because in different countries, they do, you know, even yes, yes. you are into different domain, different work experience, even after 18, 20 years, they are still allowing, okay, because but I have out a couple of, of India, students. they consider, they yes. don't consider the uh, experience. Yeah, they don't consider. But now in India also, I have seen many startups. They don't okay. check your degree. They don't check your percentage. They don't see your background. If you are someone who is able to clear interviews, okay, no matter what background you have, they are allowing. Okay, I have okay. few candidates recently. They did not had any experience in testing itself, but they were very good on automation because they worked so hard. They, you know, they have the end to end knowledge and they got hired because now consider one thing like i have two candidates one guy is five year experience okay but no knowledge when i'm taking interview i can clearly see that this guy even have five years experience but no knowledge other person have zero years experience but he has very good knowledge about the tools and the technologies and the testing processes i will obviously <laughs> go the, give the preference to the second one so there are companies who allow and but I totally agree. There are few companies they have restricted criteria. You should have B degree. You should have 60 percent throughout. You should have minimum two or three years experience. But try to look for the companies. They just focus on your skill set, not on your degree and this. So you can come anytime. So IT is quite welcoming. Actually, for it. actually I have a B tech. I have done B tech my in uh, before 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now I have learned Java, Selenium with Java uh, from mm -hmm. April batch. Then uh, I am as I am facing same problem that uh, uh, can, uh, companies are allowing uh, experience letter, asking for experience letter. 
that's why so try to find to... some company which don't you know ask for this they just okay. want the pure good candidates so companies are less but the few company exists so if you're able to crack the interviews okay okay okay, right. okay. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Manish, can you please go on next? This would be the last question, guys. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, Manish, audible. you can unmute. Manish. Yeah, I'm audible. Mm, not. We are struggling not to hear your really. voice. <laughs> Hello, I'm audible. Can I say my question in chat? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, he is sent in chat. Hello, guys, for manual tester. How to improve coding skills so you can able to do complex code. My answer is simple. Do practice as much as you can do. Like keep writing the code, keep trying to automate the different kinds of website. There are lots of practice page, practice website. Naveen recently created one practice website. So uh, Take those, keep trying to automating them as much code as you write. You will be able to, uh, you will become really good and you will, after some time, you will start enjoying as well. Yeah. See, Manish, one thing which comes to programming, okay, that if you're new to programming, don't jump into data structure, don't jump into complex programs. Start writing some basic program, first of all. Try to write some swapping, you know, adding two numbers, Fibonacci series, even number, odd numbers, and M storm number, right? So understand how to write the code okay and whenever you start writing any problem try to write on the paper first do not directly jump into eclipse id intellij try to write the logic in your paper uh, paper pen and then solve it okay because this is the main logic once you are, have the logic then you can write the code anytime so you are not a typewriter you are actually a programmer or as that right so when it comes to logic building start with this basic logics then you can go to data structure or complex programming dynamic programming competitive programming a lot of things that we are in the market so it takes time even if you ask me to write some complex scenario i might take a couple of hours because it's not we will be able to write complex code within a second or so within a minute so this logic building takes time could be years okay for us it took years still we are slowly working on it so there's no hard rule start practicing day by day take some complex scenarios as sanjay said take navin automation labs website write complex scenarios because every scenarios will give you a new solution and it will give you okay how to do this okay how to write loop here how to write conditions how to use collections here so it comes with time it comes through practice so please start from day one okay don't wait for interviews don't wait for you know next round if you're sitting ideal today, maybe take some random program and start solving. Yeah, I think my last suggestion for uh, improve the programming thing because it's a you know lifelong journey. Like after 10 years also, you will face a lot of challenges. And it's not like today, uh, let's see if I'm sitting uh, with the lead code thing and I'm able to uh, you know tackle all the questions. There are many questions that are, even we also cannot, and experts also cannot uh, handle it or crack it. But I think make it a habit, make it a passion of learning the coding basics of programming. It's just like if you are really good in mathematics, how exactly you solve the simple mathematics question. Same thing that with respect to programming also. You really want to add, for example, two numbers. So you should know that, okay, how interestingly that I can do it, right? So the same thing with the programming also. Open your IntelliJ, open your Eclipse and start writing the code. Don't just whenever you are attending a session also receive for training also. We had a lot of people that took the training from us and then Mukesh also from Sanjay also. I see that pattern. They always follow that. Okay, in session everything looks great, but the actual thing will start when you actually start writing the code by your own after the session. You open your Eclipse and then create a class and whatever the code that you are writing in Python or Java or anything, then start writing the code. Then you will get to know many things. So first get rid of all these fears that you have where exactly the statement is missing, where exactly the bracket is coming, where exactly the semicolon is missing, what do you mean by compilation error and all such things. So try to get rid of all these basic things. Improve the core features of programming. For loop, if else condition, con uh, data types, everything will remain same in Python also. Same thing you have to start with the uh, Java and C sharp or maybe some other programming languages also. So these are the five, six core concepts everywhere that you have to learn. 
in java we have a collection same thing in python also we have separate types of collection in terms of list dictionary and everything in javascript also it's having own uh, data structure and algorithms we have to do that and then once you <clears throat> done with the basics of programming then start learning about the object oriented programming but see object oriented programming is again the value addition for uh, application development point of view or framework development point of view but i'm talking about the core features whenever you have to write a core complex problem let's say you really want to implement for example a selenium thing you really want to implement a web table with the pagination of 100 pages how will you improve that right so you know that how to click on a button or how to click on a get the text of a specific element from the web table but you have to iterate the entire web table with the loop with the for loop or while loop and then how to improve the counter how will you increase the counter so these are the basic stuff when to use what that is the basic understanding is very much needed and after that i think you are absolutely good to go once you see start seeing the results then it's perfectly fine and you will start learning and then enjoying the to, uh, coding and then try to solve many problems after that keep don't revise the same thing again and again today if i know that okay how to launch the browser in selenium to from la next 100 days also exactly i'm doing the same thing then what is my learning there in that case because i know those things already so that's why like you always look for something new something interesting there in the okay in the market and how can i improve the code how can i improve my coding stuff can i improve the optimization techniques and then time complexity in all such things and with respect to the improving the coding and it's long time process it's never nobody will be expert or ex get a, that level of expertise after 10 years also every day there are new things in coding and every day there we have to learn so many things over there Great. Thank you. Thank you, Navin. Thank you, Mukesh. Thank you, Sanjay. Actually, all your inputs are valuable to us and definitely everyone has got benefited out of that. So I must say it is a very informative and uh, useful Thanks. session for all of us. Thanks. And can I say a few words as yeah. well? I think it is please an please amazing please session. Over to you. Uh, first of all, you actually took uh, 17 minutes more than what we planned, which is <laughs> really amazing. And you guys are so humble. You, I know how busy you guys are, and uh, it's amazing to have you guys with us. In fact, I was wondering, uh, we can actually do a one-day conference with only three of you. So uh, <laughs> forget about a one-hour session. I think it would be, there are so many hands, and we collected 300 questions, and Ganesh shortened down to 30. I don't think we have taken only 10% or... 15% of it. Right. Maybe we need to plan one day with you guys, make it a live event and make it a full day session. Uh, call it a conference with uh, Sanjay, Naveen and Mukesh and <laughs> invite the world over it. I think we will all love it. And that's what you guys are. Uh, you guys made our day. You guys made everybody's day in this uh, event. Uh, thank thank you, you so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Really appreciate your presence. Thank you so much. Aditya. Yeah, so it's important. Thank actually, you, Aditya, Aditya, for because amazing. Yeah, you know, everybody can, you know, talk about the technology, but the main part is the the basic questions they have, the career guidance, okay, the basic things which we have, you, do, we do actually in day-to-day -day office. So we need someone who can answer this. And even we are glad to see these kind of questions are coming and we are able to add some value. So thank you so much, uh, Adit, your team, Naveen and uh, Sanjay. Anyways, we keep doing this. Uh, we have done this in the past and we love to do this in future as well. It is just we need to see the time availability. So we'll definitely have more sessions. Yeah, yeah and all the best for your Pune event for the rape test party. I hear that you guys are there in Pune live. <laughs> so yes, everybody yes. who's thank in you, Pune, Pune, don't miss their rape test party, which is happening when, Sanjay, you mentioned that date. It's six. on six. It's so it's yeah, six it is on August. next Saturday, yeah. Yeah, Okay, Good great. guys. You yeah. can register it's uh, on Selectus website and in fact, like, let me share the link here. Yeah, please share the link. And it is in Shivaji yeah. Nagar, Pune, right, Navin? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who, yeah. La, who actually joined today from Pune? Guys, raise your hand now, who, whoever is from Pune. So you will see many are from Pune, actually. Very well, very good. So, Nine, so good, thing about the, good thing about the Pune and the people are like, like so so crazy about you know learning the new things like uh, people are especially from pune I, most of the time in my live also in my queries also people are actually <laughs> coming from pune and asking so many good questions that yeah that's really great yep. to see that. so guys Already, uh, yeah, I guess they will not miss you i think pune will be very big hit from pune yeah that is what yeah but yeah, again, once again, thank you so much, Aditya and team, Manish and I mean, uh, Ganesh and everyone. That's really great to see all these questions because this is what actually we are, you know, we always promote this thing that at the ground level, what exactly we are doing. Because in big conferences, what happens that people are presenting many things, but 
uh, at the ground level are we really implementing those things or not so we really need someone or maybe some team or maybe you know few folks of people and bunch of people who can guide us who can just tell me that okay yeah, give me that level of confidence or a kick that okay hey navin i'm struggling this i'm okay i'm struggling this in fact i also take this some you know career guidance from mukesh and sanjay sometimes yeah, right so right. that is like we mutual, all do. mutual all those things so i yeah. think just go with that guys we are all available for you guys on social media like either linkedin or youtube or everywhere just feel free to ask the questions feel free to connect feel free to join us in different cities like we are organizing a lot of meetups and conferences from yeah. ata also these all are experts but don't a uh, compromise in your career please learn at the right time at the right thing that's very important thank you so much once again yeah again a big round of applause for our experts thank and the you. audience and the host ganesh uh, harsh and uh, nayan and everybody of the volunteers who made this event possible thank you so much guys yeah thank, thank you so much guys thank you so much yeah. for joining it was wonderful yeah. evening yeah yeah sure thank, thank you so thank guys. you adi and team have a nice day bye thank bye thank you bye bye good night thank